I need to cut some 6 TPI Acme threads on this metric lathe. I made, I made a gear, I made a 60, 63 tooth gear, a conversion gear, so I can cut imperial threads. I've got a chart that a friend of mine kindly did for us, and I'd call Stan. And on the chart it says I have to run in 80 in conjunction with a 120. But you can see I can't get the 80 into mesh. There isn't enough room on the banjo to slide the gear far enough up there. So what I'll do, I'll take the banjo off. That's the banjo, it's called a banjo for obvious reasons. Take the banjo off and that is enough metal to extend that slot. It only wants a quarter of an inch. That would be enough to allow it to, to, allow it to fit. I've cut imperial threads down to 8 TPI before, but to go down to 6 I need to change the, change that one gear. Now you can see why it's, why it's called a banjo. And all I want to do is extend that slot. Little spigot shaft that your eye leg gear goes into. Got a brass bush in there and a nice little long lip on the end. I need to make sure that this slot is lying in line with the machine. You can put a clock gauge on here and run a clock gauge on there. An easy way to do it, I've got a couple of dowels made that are a tight fit in the T slot. So if I put them in there and simply push the job up against it, and tighten it over that, that's going to get me very, very nearly in lane, if not perfectly in lane, quickly and simply. If I could just find the spanner. Right, so it's touching both of them dowels. See what I want, quarter of an inch out of this end. So that slot now is running parallel to the machine bed, it can't be anything else. Put a cutter here, it's slightly narrower than the, than the slot, so we'll be able to do one side, come across and do the other side. As I've said, I only want a quarter inch until the end of the year, just enough so that I can get that big gear in. Yeah, God, that's horrible. It's doing the job, but it's, uh, it doesn't like it. You put a small carbide mill and cut her in, and that's cutting a lot better. side done. Well, this side I'll be very careful because we're actually we'll be climbing when we do this one. Just touching there. The table's locked off. Just taking a light cut. Just try 
of tea nut in there. That's better. I've got that extra quarter of an inch of movement, which should be enough. Okay, so you can see now we've got a little bit extra travel. That's as far as it went. We've gained nearly half an inch, so we should be able to mesh the two big gears now. Okay, so the 120 goes on the bottom. Let's place that first. 120. Okay, then I need a, a 50 on there, which I've got, which drives a 63, which is that one. Yeah, 50 to 63 is the same as our 100 to 127 are very similar that drives that then we need the 80 tooth onto there which we can get and that drives so we've got 50 63 connect it to a 80 driving a 120 Right, and that boundary lifts up and turns into mesh. There's a 50 up there. Right, that's awesome. So the change gears are only be running very slowly. I'm cutting a very coarse thread. Right, I've got the lathe all set up to cut the six threads of the inch acne thread. I've just put my ordinary metric tool in just for a demonstration. I've got some nail on bar in because nail on bar is cheap, quick, and easy to turn just for checking threads. In last week's video, I repaired Stan's meat grinding machine and I cut the 12 threads of the inch and a big nut. Um, quite a few people said that if I, because when I cut the thread, I left the half nuts engaged and I reversed the lathe. It's a plotty way to do it, it's a time consuming way, but it always works, you can't lose the thread. And quite a few people said, as my lathe's got a thread dial indicator, if I start the thread on the same place every time, like on a whole number every time, I'll be able to disengage the lead nuts take it back to that whole number and start it again and it'll pick the threads up. But this is now your opportunity to find out if that's right or not. So it's all set up, the tool is just touching the job. I'm just going to put a cut on with a, a cross slide. I put a quarter of a mil on so it puts a decent, a decent size cut on. Everything's engaged. I'm watching me thread down in the kit app. It's coming on to 120. I'm going to engage it on 120. There. Right, it's cutting a real coarse thread, which is what we want. Six threads to the inch. At the end of the cut, I'm going to disengage. Disengage. Okay, it's stopped in the end. Check the threads. Perfect six threads to the inch. Great, right, there you are. Perfect six threads to the inch. So I'm zeroing the cross slide. I'll wind it out. Take the tool back to the beginning. Cross slide back to zero. And another quarter of a mil cut. 
Now I'm going to start the lathe up. I'm going to engage the lead screw at 120. And hopefully we'll be able to see this. Either, either pick the thread up or it won't pick the thread up. My money is on it won't pick the thread up. Right, it's coming round. 60. Down to the 90. 100. 110. Coming up now. And gears at the 120. Right. And that's conclusive proof that's cutting a double star thread. It is not picking up the same thread. Okay? I'll do it again. Zero. Out. Back to the beginning. Zero. Quarter mil cut. It's coming on again. One twenty engaged. There you are. It's cutting the staggered thread. It's the bastard thread. It isn't cutting on the same thread. So from now on, I'll do what I've always done. I'll reverse the lathe. Means where I've got this set up. And I've got a bit more ball to play with. I'll have a look, and I'll do. I do four threads of the inch as well. To course our thread again. So four threads of the inch. Change wheel into there and that'll cut four threads of the inch. And I'm watching again, I'll use the same one, I'll use the 120. Right, 120. I didn't put any feed on. Right, stop it. Do it again. Right, it did scratch it, but it didn't. It'll scratch it this time, alright. And here we'll go with the 120. Stop. Out. Back to the beginning. Pushing for the 120 coming round. Here it comes. It's possibly picked that one up. I'll do it again. There's a 120 coming. That is picking the same thread up. So it didn't work for six, but it's working for four. Do it once more. It certainly didn't work on six, but it's appeared to be working on four. The no reversing the lathe always works, but it can be time consuming, especially on a long thread. Here it comes, 120. It's not actually picking up. It's not actually picking up a true thread. It's it's cutting further and further forward each time. It's very near, but it's not. It's certainly not near enough. Right. When you're cutting imperial threads on this metric lathe, you don't disengage the feed nuts. And I'm sure it works the other way around. I know on my box fad, which was imperial, and I cut lots of metric threads. That lathe was the same. I didn't ever I disengage the feed nuts, just reverse the lathe. It's not too bad to do on this lathe because it has got a clutch, so I can disengage the drive. These are the molding tools Dave kindly sent us. See, they've been cast from bronze, possibly cast as an apprentice piece, I'm not sure. But all of these are worn, they've all been used, all been well used. Various shapes. 
some of these have actually got makers names on that one's got a name on can't quite make it out these hooks have actually got a safe hook and load stamped into them I think it says 100 weight spoons and formers and nice soft brush basically the Sandcasters toolkit just remains to say as usual once again thanks very much for watching thanks for subscribing and a special thanks to all the wonderful messages that are coming in towards Deb Deb's doing great she's working she's been at work today she's enjoying work she's enjoying getting back to some sort of normality there is one more thing I'd, I'd like to say quite a serious thing um, <clears throat> this Sunday is actually six years to the day I lost my brother uh, in a motor bike accident. Basically, he was involved in an accident with a car. And I'd just like to say one thing when you're driving your car, look twice, look for cars, look again for bikes. If me seeing this makes one person look twice and save one life, it's worth me getting this upset about. Please think bike.